All right, guys, welcome back to the King Closer Reacts. Today, we're going to be reacting to a 22-year-old wholesaler out of Chicago, Cameron Oliveira. I'm not familiar with Cameron. Uh, looks like he's newer in the game. Uh, he's had a YouTube channel for about five or six months. Quite a few views. Looks like he's got high-quality production going on. Uh, I did briefly watch a couple of highlights of this just to verify uh, that it was worth reacting to, and I liked what I saw. Uh, he looked pretty confident on the phone, and uh, I feel like this is going to be a, a good video today. So I'm excited to see what Cameron brings to the table. So let's get to his video here. He is actually cold calling on these, which is impressive because a lot of times with straight cold calls, it's hard to get to like a super impactful conversation. It seems like he's got a couple on here, so we actually might get more than one call. Let's get into it. Get to ripping. Google Dialer, please press the start button on your screen to begin calling. Hey, thanks for calling. To connect and talk, just say your name and what you're calling about after the beep. Cameron, calling out to Tracy. Hey, thanks. I hate these Google voices. They never pick you, up. Bro. Tracy, I guarantee she doesn't pick up. Hello? Hey, Tracy? Yeah? Hey, sorry, I was looking hey, for... Like... Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, what's going on, Tracy? This is Cam. I just wanted to give you a quick call uh, to ask you about a property on here in Chicago. Yeah, sure. Just so one of the things I will say was is uh, the initial pickup looks like the Tracy name threw him off. He thought it was going to be a woman. And it was a man that answered the phone. Uh, but then when the actual Tracy got on the phone, he seemed very comfortable, a lot more comfortable than the initial pickup. A little, little interesting there. Uh, we'll say, before we get into to his closing techniques and style, uh, just absolute amazing view. Uh, love wherever he's called from. That's his house, apartment, office, whatever's going on here. Uh, killer view, bro. Best view so far of any reaction video. Just wanted to see if there was any interest to sell that in the near future. Well, yeah. Probate. I see. I see. Okay, so we're and apparently there is a, a lien on the thing because my nephew messed around and uh, signed a contract with some crazy ass corporation I've never heard of, Cam. And uh, you know, we're trying to get it done and over with, but you know, it always takes one idiot to get to screw everything up. Yep, yep. Probate can get a little bit tricky, especially if not all of the. The family members are on the same page. Now, just curious, I've done a lot of these types of probate deals in the past, you know, buying, buying them from estates and whatnot. Do you know if you've received letters of office or if the uh, the independent administrator has received that, that those letters of office just yet? So I love this. Uh, you know, he gets started. He finds out, yes, they do want to sell. Uh, then he finds out the motivation. Hey, it's a probate case. Uh, we're, we're still going in. And then I love how instead of transitioning the conversation to something else, he stayed on that subject and, and really builds credibility with kind of a little subtle flex there of his knowledge about probate cases and how he does these deals and building credibility with a question. You guys always hear me talk about that. Hey, we build credibility, uh, and, and we do that with open-ended questions, but also by kind of understanding the process. He does a great job early on, especially in a cold call, to get a seller to open up, start talking about this. Seems like a very open and willing seller to kind of communicate with them and answer any and all questions. Does sound very highly motivated. Uh, love that question by Cameron right there. Well, I would be the independent administrator, but... Apparently, we've got to go back to court again on the second to find out if we're going to be supervised or is it going to be independent. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I know that process can can take a bit. And and regarding this lien, what is this lien about? Because my my attorney can he, he can work some wonders. You'd be surprised depending on what kind of lien it is, of course. Great well, question. if you pull up the MLS, my nephew did a call himself selling the property, and somebody else signed it. I don't know if it's a lead, but I was working with another gentleman, and he found this MLS. That is. 
MLS. So I, I think the seller is using the the wrong terminology here. Um, I'm I'm wondering if what he's saying is is that the property was listed on the MLS by the nephew, probably not rightfully so, and someone else signed the contract and then filed the memorandum. I'm trying to read between the lines there. I'm not quite understanding what he's saying because there's a he's saying there's a lien on the property. Uh, but then he's using MLS. So again, uh, what I'd like to see from Cameron here is is not get too lost in the weeds. We can figure this out uh, through some questions. Uh, you don't want to get too into what the specifics are happening because really this can be resolved once we open up title and find out if it's actually just a memorandum or what the lien is. This is not overly important at this point this early on in the conversation because quite frankly we don't even know if this is a distressed property uh that needs to be sold for a discount or anything like that but it was a, a good question uh a solid transition really like the way cameron started this conversation so far crazy i mean yeah if you're the independent administrator you're the only one that can actually sign off on these documents so that doesn't okay. that doesn't make make much sense yeah just telling you what I've been told and what I'm going through. I gotcha. Are you, are you, I assume you are working with a, a probate attorney on this matter? Yes, his name is Jeff Burke. I'm not, I'm not too familiar with Jeff, but I always like to ask just because, you know, we, we, we've, you know, have had a, a ton of these scenarios happen over and over again when we're trying to, when we just want to buy some property, you know? So, looking at the, looking at the deed, I don't see any liens on the property. A lot of this stuff is public knowledge. Um, and, and you can see it on record. I don't see any liens on there, but who knows? They might have not recorded something on time or, or whatever the case may be. But It's an unofficial contract is what I was told and what I have seen. The contract is not an official contract. Well, um, now explain that one to me. What I believe is, is that the nephew listed the property. Another investor came in, got it under contract, and then found out that this is a probate case and filed the memorandum of contract. That's what I feel like is happening. Um, and then someone along the lines, either another attorney or a realtor or somebody told them, hey, this is what happened. We listed your property in the MLS. And that's what he's getting. He's messing up some of the terminology here. But that's what I'm reading between the lines. That's what I would assume at this point. Uh, but again, I would, I would move on from this topic and kind of get into the nuts and bolts. Because it seems like they're going to court pretty soon and they're going to find out who's the, well, find out that this gentleman right here is the independent administrator is what I would assume. <laughs> well, if it's an unofficial contract, then it's void. It's it, it, it's dissolved. You, you can't do anything with it now. I mean, in a, in a perfect world, how soon would you like to actually get this property off of your hands and have it sold? Tomorrow. <laughs> okay, I got you. Just because I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm stepping on any toes or anything like that. Last thing I want to do is, you know, be a burden or anything like that. But if you're looking to sell something quick and I'm looking to buy something quick, I'd love to kind of, you know, join forces and maybe see if we can speed things up a little bit for you if you're not opposed. So love, love that question. Love how he got the timeline out of him. I'd like to see him now talk about price. I'd like to hear him say, so how much are you looking to get for this property? And then we can go into condition after that because we understand that he needs to sell. He wants to sell quickly. This is a burden for him. What's the two most important things? Price and motivation. We understand the motivation. We understand that he's highly motivated. Now we just wanted to see, is the price going to match that motivation? I'd like to see him go to price here. That would be greatly appreciated. But on the other side of it, I'm not looking to uh take a drastic hit on it either because you know we had an offer two years ago for 189 i know the market's not there for that right now because of what my nephew has done so you know we're not looking to take too big a dive on it yeah and knowing i'm not dumping it for 50 60 thousand dollars either that's freaking insane <laughs> No, of course. I, the last thing I want to do is make this a, a, a win-lose or a lose-win for, for this scenario. I, I always try to strive for win-wins. But in terms of the condition of the property, um, I mean, I'd love to get a little bit of an idea, maybe run some numbers over on my end, and then I can get like a ballpark figure of what I can work with. 
So I feel like he. this is the first, like, just maybe misstep by Cameron, in my opinion. He did a really good job early on in the conversation when the seller wanted to talk about the probate stuff. He stayed on topic, and he asked a follow-up question about the probate. And then he, he asked a follow-up question about the lien. He did a really good job of staying in the pocket right there. Right here, the seller very clearly doesn't want to talk about the condition. He wants to talk about money. And so he's like, I got an offer for one any time. I'm definitely not selling it for 50 to 60. The the door was wide open for Cameron to then ask, well, how much do you want? What what is that? He Cameron says he wants to make this a win-win situation. Why not ask the seller in your scenario what would make that what number would make this a win for you? Because that's what the seller wants to talk about right now. I would have loved to see him stay in the pocket right there and ask about money instead of transitioning the condition. Because I feel like the path that he's leading himself down now is he's going to ask about condition and then he has to make an offer. I would like to see him stay away from having to make the offer, understand what the seller wants, then talk about the condition, and then you can educate the seller on why your number is what it is. Get in touch with your attorney, get in touch with you, maybe present that offer. It, was, it wasn't renovated in the last 10 years. My grandmother and grandfather owned it. They didn't do a lot of crazy rentals. Uh, I can tell you the furnace is new in it. Well, a couple of years old anyway. Uh, I can't really tell you the condition of it because my nephew's been living there. And... I'm going to tell you point blank, it's a great community. The problem is, he's a freaking drug addict. And he had people living upstairs that shouldn't have been living there. So, I could, I, I really can't tell you in a perfect world, in an honest world, mm -hmm. the condition of the building. I, I, I'd be telling you the damn lie if I did. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um... I guess more of the bigger ticket items. Like I appreciate you mentioning, you know, a new furnace a few years back. Um, do you know if it has uh, an AC unit in there, or is it just on the the window AC units? No, it's not central air. No central air. Okay. Not even central air. And then in terms of like the the plumbing or the electrical, do you know if that's been been updated relatively, you know, recent? No. No. Okay, I gotcha. Um, and then the in, in terms of the the roof, do you know if that's been you know, redone within the last 10 years or so? In the last 10 years, yes. Last 10 years, okay, gotcha. You're an honest man, I appreciate you for uh, kind of letting me know these these bigger ticket I'm items. <laughs> so, it, 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 here's the problem. Cameron has definitely kind of walked himself into he is going to be making an offer on this property. Might be his Might be his process, he might always do this. If he had asked at that moment, what is the number that you're looking to get out of this? It's not 189. It's not 50 to 60. It's going to be somewhere in between that. I would assume somewhere, I don't know, 130, 140 is probably what this seller has in mind and would be willing to accept. With him now, if he would have transitioned from that and got the number out of him, and then we say, okay, tell me about the condition, and he's, a very upfront and honest seller saying, Hey, I don't know. And I know that my drug addict nephew lives here and there's issues and all of this going on. That's where Cameron could really kind of hammer home. Like, so if you don't know about the condition, how are you coming up with this dollar amount that you want for the property? Uh, because it's hard for me to come up with a number of, I don't know the condition. Um, I would have liked to have seen him really ask that question because now Cameron's in a precarious position, right? Um, he, he kind of understands some of the bigger ticket items. Obviously, we have to assume that all of the cosmetics need to be updated. And then he comes up with a number, but it's a blind number. We don't even know the number. We, we have a range, right? More than 60, less than 189, but we don't know what that number is. I always want to know that number. That's to me, it's the one of the most important things that we can find out. Well, being straight as I could possibly be, you know, I know how my grandfather left it. I couldn't get you condition in the last two and two years to save my life because it is for Yeah, it's not the first time I've heard heard something like this in this scenario. And then I know you I know you mentioned um you know, there's there's some things with, you know, probate that needs to get figured out. 
Um, but let's let's assume you do like our offer, and you know we do get the probate stuff figured out, and you decide to move forward with it. Is there is there anything else, or what would be like the next thing that you would need to you know get figured out before you can actually close on this? If if anything, maybe some memorabilia in the house, or you know having to move some personal items, any anything like that that crosses your mind? Nope, you can take it the way it is. It wouldn't hurt my feelings, but nothing in there that belongs to me or anybody in my family that I'm concerned with. Okay. Okay, got it, got it. Interesting question. Um, I don't love it. I don't hate it. I'm assuming the majority of time when Cameron asks that question, he gets a pretty similar response. Um, where it's just kind of like, especially this deep in the conversation, what are we, in seven and a half minutes, but it's edited, so this is probably somewhere in the 10 to 11 minute mark of the conversation. Uh... I mean, it's like, hey, if everything is taken care of, is there anything that you would like to remove from the house? Um, I don't know if that's a relevant question to where we are in the conversation, right? Um, and, and maybe Cameron does that because he wants to see if there's anything that has to be removed uh, from the house. Maybe like in a hoarder situation, you know, there's going to be quite a bit of trash removal, debris removal, stuff like that. Uh, again, just... When I see a misstep in a close, then sometimes I see the trickle down effect of like the next two, three, four questions where I kind of somewhat am like, uh, I don't love where we're going. I love where we were, but now I'm, I'm kind of like not loving the conversation as much. I will say I love Cameron's tonality. I love the way that he's uh, building rapport with the seller. Uh, he sounds very credible on the phone. Just a few little tweaks, and I feel like this conversation could have been like epic. Whereas right now, I'm wondering how we're even going to get to a position of making a solid offer, and and how could this be a closable deal at this point? I, I don't feel like it's closable because he's going to be presenting an offer. I feel like the the end result at this point is probably going to be like. Okay, Cameron, uh, let me go to court. Let me find out if I'm the independent administrator. If I am, then I'll call you back. That's what I feel like we have walked ourselves into uh, right now. You're an easygoing guy. I, I, man, you'd, you'd be surprised. I, I don't come across this scenario quite often where you know, you, you'd make it you know, a smooth if and you easy transaction. you know what we've been through in the last two, two, three months, man, you'll understand we are so ready to be done with this process it's unbelievable now now just curious based on based on everything that you told me about the condition and and everything else that's kind of going on if we were to you know maybe be able to speed things up kind of maybe help get things cleared up and out of the way with things and get that headache off your hands what what do you feel be like a fair price for this property 150 160 so I said 130, 140 is what I feel like he would be willing to accept. He comes back with 150 or 160. My question to Cameron is, why didn't you ask that when he wanted to talk about money? Because then you could have talked about the condition and then you could have been talking about money while you're talking about the condition. Now it's a little bit harder, in my opinion. It's a little bit more aggressive uh when now you've asked for that number and now we have to stay there and talk about it it's easier to say well, what's the what's the fair number what's the winning number for you 150 or 160 okay tell me about the condition i don't really know i haven't seen the property in years well how are you coming up with 150 or 160 how do you think that's a fair number because quite frankly i want to know the seller's mindset i actually want to know how they came up with the number so even though he hasn't followed the exact same flow that I would, I would like to hear him ask that. How did you come up with that number? Got it. Yeah, I'll, I'll do some digging and I'll let you know what I what I see on my end. Um, well, I'll tell you this. I'm sure you will. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take about like twenty to thirty to you know talk to some partners to see what this this you know property can can qualify for in terms of price then you know i can i can maybe give you a call back today or maybe you know next week or over the weekend um and then from there i can kind of let you know what what we you know have to offer what it, 
would look like to work with us and you know anything else that I can get figured out regarding you know this this probate matter because I do have some resources that I'm able to look at online to see if everything's all clear and ready to go and then I can maybe even talk to my attorney about some sort of affidavit of airship if that can help at all you know he, he knows better than I do so I definitely want to just ask him about it he's he's very knowledgeable on this matter and we can kind of take it from there how, how does that sound Tracy Awesome, awesome. Alrighty, well, I'll do that and I can get back to, or I'll have one of my partners, uh, you know, Ethan or Tristan get back to as well. And, you know, we'll take it from there, my friend. Okay, Sam. Appreciate you. I hope you have a great weekend, Tracy. Hey, you do the same, sir. Happy Father's Day to you if you are. You as well. Take care. Awesome. All right, so. I actually really like Cameron and, and how he navigates the conversation. I feel like the process is just broken. That was not a good result for that phone call. That is a highly motivated seller. Um, quite frankly, if I had to use an analogy here, I feel like Cameron has top-notch talent in an offense that is like a football offense that's just not calling the right plays. That, that should have gotten to a much better result. I feel like Cameron is actually far too knowledgeable for that to be a, let me do some analysis. He's doing the analysis. He's clicking around. Unless there was just something that he saw that alarmed him to, to force that to be the result, I feel like that could have been way better, way better. Far too talented, uh, far too smooth on the phones. Uh, did a great job early on, and then you could just see. I mean, he, he went the four pillars route, right, where price is always last. He found the motivation. He found the timeline. Then he went condition. Then he went price. He found out the price. And then now we're, we're mandating, we're forcing and choosing to make this a multiple call uh, phone process when this seller literally told him earlier on the call, when do you want to sell? Tomorrow. You're going to have the house tomorrow. I, I don't like that. I, I will never be okay with that being the result. So for me right there, I, I would have rather have seen Cameron take the time to really dive into it, figure out this is what, all the stuff that he's talking about with the probate, talking to his attorney and all those things, that could have been resolved post getting a contract signed. I mean, we should have been talking about, uh, let's try to get this deal done as quickly as possible. Let's come to an agreement on price today. Get this signed. We'll help walk you through the probate process because he's saying he has the ability to do it. Flex that muscle. Actually show him. Prove it to him. Uh, that you're willing to get it done as quickly as possible. And even with the follow-up, I mean, it's like maybe we'll call you tomorrow or over the weekend or maybe next week. It's just so loose. Like, if I'm that seller, I'm like, well, I really liked Cameron and I thought he was going to be a solution, but I don't even know when he's going to call me back. And I don't even know if it's going to be him. It could be Ethan. It could be Tristan. Uh, damn. All right. On to the next. I will also tell you this, Cameron, if you watch this, if I talk to him, I'm coming in, you'll never have an opportunity to talk to him again because I'm going to close that deal. That's a highly motivated seller. Um, and if the price is anywhere remotely close to being a wholesale deal, then we're going to snipe that from you. And when you call him back, he's going to say, I decided to move forward with RJ. So really good call, actually. Um, normally I would like to start with motivation and really, really dig into that. But when it comes to these probate matters and, you know, they already made that decision that they want to get rid of that property, you can't peck her too much on, you know, why do you want to sell this? Why not just keep it? Like, what's your motivation? Because they, they were given a property that they don't even want. Somebody passed away and they just want to sell it and get rid of it. So there's not too much to peck her on that. What there is to peck her on or maybe probe on a little bit is kind of the urgency on it. Like he said, he wants to sell it tomorrow if he can. Exactly. Listen to your own advice here, Cameron. This is why you should have never gotten off the phone. 
This thing is a complete headache. You wouldn't believe what's happened in the last few months. And then obviously when he does bring up, like you wouldn't believe what it's been like in these last da 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 da, I'll be like, oh, what do you mean by that? Just to kind of make him say it out loud, create a little bit more urgency instead of probing on it and asking him, why do you want to sell? It's like, let me ask like a problem inducing question that will kind of create some more urgency. And that's kind of what happened there. So this is what I'm looking at here. I'm on Zillow, I'm in the neighborhood that it's at. Go to sold, looking at multifamily because it's a two unit. I'm looking back the last six months. Um, look at here, this two flat. Let's confirm that it is a two flat. Multifamily, generous size bedrooms. I can, I can assure this is definitely a two unit. Sold for 400. And if you go to the price history, in 2022, he bought this for 160. So you heard the man, he's willing to sell it for 150 to 160. It's a $10,000 wholesale deal that we potentially have at our hands here. Well, actually, in my opinion, I, I believe, I firmly believe he could get this for 130 to 140, um, especially if, if he, he's missing the part that the seller actually doesn't know the condition. If he educates them on, hey, we're taking a chance on this sight unseen. I bet you, you can get it for 130, 140, and then yeah, you can turn around and sell it uh, for 150, 160. I really like the fact that he showed the deal analysis there. I wish he was using a better comping tool than Zillow, but at times Zillow could be you know useful in this scenario. Uh, I'm curious if this is the follow up call. If this is the follow up call, then I, I'm going to love it because I, I want to hear how this this finishes. Hello, Array. Hello, Cam. Yeah. Hey, hey, Ray. This is Cam. I just had a quick question for you regarding I'm in Chicago. Oh yeah, how you doing, Cam? I'm doing real good. I appreciate you for asking. I just wanted to see if there was any interest uh -huh. to sell that in the near future. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I got somebody over there. We got, you know, we got a squatter in there. Woo! All right, so cold call number two. We're moving on from that one. So I I really like his cold call intro. I mean, he, he does a really good job. Sounds uh, really smooth. One of the things that I want you to take away from Cameron is he has a really good job of slowing down, right? Hey, Ray, this is Cameron. This is Cam. Like, he does a really good job. A lot of times we let the nerve and kind of the adrenaline, especially when you're cold calling, because you can go pretty significant time in between answers. He's doing a really good job of like watching his speed. Uh, and also, I know he's on camera, but and so some of this might just be because he's on camera, but I really like his body language. I like how he kind of reacts to what the seller's saying. I kind of like how he'll have like the subtle little victory, like fist pumps and stuff like that. Uh, because I can tell you sellers can feel that body language on the other end of the phone. So two really solid takeaways, the, the speed in which he's delivering, uh, his cadence and then also body language. Goodness uh, gracious. Trying to get him out, man. That's, that's where we are. Oh my God. You got a squatter in there? How'd that happen? I don't know. They moved in. He said, well, it was my cousin's house. I'm in charge of his estate. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're trying to sell all his properties, and we can't sell this one, and because the squad is saying he owns the house. Man, these guys, they make businesses out of this stuff nowadays. They break into these homes, they write fake leases, they have some mail sent over, and then boom, they got a house to live in for free the next year. But the house is, the, the deed is in, in my cousin's name. So, I don't know, man. I, I got a lawyer working on it. He's been working on it for a year. Been working on it for a year? He's but been... You know, the taxes, the taxes are due, so we trying to decide we gonna pay the taxes or just let it go, man. I don't know what to pay. Oh my goodness, these people are thinking about letting it go to the squatter. All right, listen, this is why wholesalers have a place in the marketplace. Okay, we solve these types of problems. This is I really like to see Cameron really come in and be a solution for them. Like this is our responsibility to our industry right here. Um, uh, clearly, he's cold calling a, a probate inherited property list. Um, and, and this might be what he focuses on.
right? Being a solution for these types of problems, I really want to see him kind of come in and really show his expertise here. Family wants to do. Interesting, interesting. Do you know uh do you know how much is owed on the property? About ten grand on tax back tax. Oh, that's nothing. Somebody bought the tax. We had to redeem it by next month. Okay. Is there any outstanding mortgages on the property? No. Okay, so really the only thing that we need to worry about is the taxes and then the squatter? Yeah. Okay. And the squatter. Do you know if we have any sort of direct communication with the squatter or I had, I was talking to someone, another broker, they went over there yesterday and rung the doorbell, oh. and some little kid came to the door. Oh my God. But this guy, I pulled him up, he's a pedophile, he shouldn't have to be around kids. So I told him to call the police, because he's a child molester. My goodness. Convicted felon. Yeah, it's just always something, man, I swear. I think, I think I can figure something out with this i mean this isn't the first case where you know we've had to deal with the squatter we're having to redeem some taxes i don't want to just jump the gun and say oh we'll pay the taxes we'll redeem them for you we'll we'll pay no, the squatter no, to get out no, of there no. but we can we can get something figured out here i think i love that response because that's almost identical the same response that i have when crazy stories get told to you by a seller which this is a crazy story i mean it's like it was his cousin's house, estate, squatter moved in. Now it's claiming it's their property. The guy's a convicted felon. Um, you know, there's children living there and he's a convicted, you know, pedophile. I mean, this is it, it, insane stuff, right? I love how just right off the bat, you throw all scripts, throw all process out the window and just immediately go into, I could be your solution. I could solve this problem. Uh, because that is the ultimate rapport that you can build with a seller right there through the credibility that you are the solution to their problem. If we can, if we can, you know, make this a win-win for the both of us, I think there's something that we can get figured out. Maybe I can have one of my guys swing over that way and talk with him, figure something out, and and maybe we can take it from there. Do you know how long it's been occupied for? Oh, he's uh, uh, how long he's been living there? You mean? Yeah. Shoot, a couple of years. Oh my, he's in there deep. Yeah, he's been there for free, that's that's the bad part. Now, let me do this. Let me do a little bit of digging. Let can you me, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Let me, let me do a little bit of digging. Let me talk yeah, with yeah, the- Yeah, my phone going in and out. Can you hear me okay? Let me try to talk with, uh, with, with somebody that's helped me with something like this in the past. And um, we can we can kind of go from there. I'm curious to see if maybe we can have a conversation with the the individual that's that's staying there currently. Maybe we can send him a letter if he doesn't answer the door. Maybe leave a couple sticky notes on his windows and and see what what we can do here. Because what he's doing, I mean, it's so unfair. I mean, he, he's living in a house for free. You know, you you guys obviously just want to sell this off. You don't want to have to take any sort of you know hit right. with taxes. Right. And he's, like he's suing the estate. He's suing the estate. Wow. Yeah. Oh my Crazy. Do you know what his name is? Michael. Michael. Yeah, he got a record man as long as your arm. <laughs> <laughs> he got a record. Okay, let me tell you this, all right? I'm gonna do some digging. I'm gonna talk with some individuals, and and we'll take it from there. And and I'll uh, have myself or one of my partners give you a call back. Let's see if we can get this thing squared away. Okay, let me know, man. All, all right. right. Take care. Hey, so say this is the first call. I mean, he's a highly motivated seller, and he's saying he's the solution. Now, I will say, I'll give him a little bit of grace on this one. He, he probably does actually need to call somebody and figure out, like, man, maybe it's an attorney, maybe it's someone to go over there and, you know, you know, politely ask him to leave. Who knows what he's going to do as far as those phone calls goes. But, man, Cameron, I'd love to see you to get to, like, hey, man, when we got this motivated of a seller, uh let, let's get in the nuts bolts we know that it's highly distressed he never asked about how much money do you need to move on from this he doesn't know how much the bat taxes are i would have loved to see like hey what do you want to solve this um uh, you know it's probably a little bit on top of the the bat taxes he's probably got to do some sort of cash for keys to get the squatter out of there or something um i will say that's the first time i've heard i've literally heard a seller say that the squatter is suing the estate 
All right, that's that's next level confidence in your squatter abilities. That is insanity. Squatters are crazy. Hot. No, squatters are actually so ridiculous. I swear to God, what they do. I'm just looking at the deed here right now. You're gonna side hustle 2024. <laughs> We're gonna start a let's start a course on no, teaching people how to squat at home. How to get squatting? <laughs> No, because what squatters will do, and it's honestly so insane, they'll write up a fake lease, they'll break into a home that they know is vacant, get some mail sent, and that's all they need to have a case oh, for well, a year. It's like their home address or residence. Because then it's like, okay, well, because then a court sees that, it's well, okay, well, they have a lease, they have this, they, or they have like a deed or something like this. That So then they got to really look into it and it's like, all right, we got to go to court for this. And then you're stuck in court for a year, year and a half, however long. You know what cold calling is like? It's like fishing. <laughs> it's a waiting game. You cast in your line, you wait for the bobber, to start moving a little bit. You get that little green icon on here telling you that somebody's about to answer. And boom, you reel them in. Hello. Hey, Mrs. Handy. Yeah. Hey, Mrs. Handy, this is Cam. I just had a quick question for you regarding. This is who? Oh, this is Cameron. I know I'm kind of calling a little bit out of the blue. I was recently in the area, drove past that property. Just want to see if there was any interest to sell it in the near future. Sure, make me an offer. All right. So this is the first one that he's getting like that true cold call line, right? Who are you? He did a really good job. He slowed himself down even more than he did on the first two calls. Uh, really kind of lightened up his tone, kind of uh, trying to mirror her. And and then she hits him with the make me an offer. Now, I'm assuming he feels like he has a pretty, pretty go-to like process script that he's using. He doesn't sound scripted, uh, but he definitely has lines that he uses. I'm assuming he's going to have one right here for make me an offer. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, before I can do that, I just want to get a little bit of an understanding of the condition of the property, you know, run my numbers, do my proper due diligence. And uh, I'd be able to give you kind of like a ballpark figure from there to see if we can come to an agreement. Go right in here. Awesome. So, yeah, um, in terms of the in terms of the condition, um, what would you be able to tell me about it? And like at least the bigger ticket items, at least to save us both some time. Um, like the furnace, does it have a oh, furnace? Oh, the outside, the outside, oh, it has two furnaces. I have two tenants in there paying 1800 a month, one on the first and one on the second. I mean, that amazing how, you know, she just immediately changed her tune. Uh, he did a really good job there. One thing he needs to work on, he says in terms of a lot. and. I don't have a problem with that, but when you're asking about the condition, it's in terms of the furnace, in terms of the HVAC, in terms of the, the roof. Just be careful of you're using the same language over and over and over again, because then it does sound, even though he's doing a pretty good job not sounding scripted, you'll start giving that like not authentic feel um you, you start sounding like a cold caller and you want to avoid that at all costs it needs some outside work i would probably put up some siding and do some things on the outside and um probably do something on the back porches okay would be my plan yeah Gotcha, gotcha. And also, just kind of curious, what, what has you thinking about selling this property? Oh, I've been a snowbird in Florida for a long time, and I want to sell about 12 pieces and get out of here. I've had enough of Chicago. Woo. Had enough of Chicago. Well, I'm, I'm ready to take the torch. I just got here, and I'm ready to keep the legacy going strong, Mrs. Handy. Um, but you said that you got 12 pieces of property you're looking to sell? Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Are they all kind of... In the south side of Chicago as well? All in that same area and one in Dalton. Oh, it's my it's my bread and butter. Except Dalton with that, that new mayor. She's a, she's a unique one, I gotta say. I don't know if uh, she'll, she'll be gone soon. She'll be gone soon. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I 
So you got to be careful when you talk politics. Unless they want to, unless they bring up politics, I always want to avoid it. Uh, you, you don't, you don't want to lose a deal just because you say the wrong thing. You never know uh, what side of the fence they're on. I love the Dalton area. It's a nice little, it's a nice little neighborhood. So I'd love to, you know, continuously build some more real or, or portfolios over that way. But you said that you've just been in Florida, a snow snowbird over there, and ready to just get rid of everything over here. Yeah. Nice, nice. Okay, I gotcha. So, what are you looking for? I'll be, I'll be completely straightforward. I'm looking for something that I can come in, do some renovations on, and then kind of do a, a quick fix and flip on. The vacant properties tend to be my favorite. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, vacant properties tend to be my favorite just because obviously they are a little bit quicker deals, and we don't have to, you know, hold hands with tenants trying the to help them. The only two I have vacant right now. Two houses, a five bedroom on 74th and a three bedroom in Dalton. Everything else is rented. Would I be able to take down those addresses by any chance? Sure. Uh, the five bedroom, two bath, big Queen Anne house, about 3,100 square feet. Um. Dalton. One th- Three bedroom, two bath. You said 138 what? Zero four. Zero four. And what was that street? Yeah, I'm probably looking for at least 100 for each of those. 100,000 for each of them? Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, just just curious, how long have these been vacant for? 74th has been vacant for about a year. Dawson just moved out last weekend. I've been housing immigrants. I had 20 families. And uh, a lot of them can't afford to pay the rent after the government mm. paid their first portion. So I'm clearing them out. Got it. Wow. Got it. Okay. Um, I know you got a bunch of properties and the last thing I want to do is make you feel like you're taking a survey on what the condition of these properties are. But to save you and myself some time, I think these prices are pretty, pretty fair if I got to say. Um, if we were to want to maybe set something up to view them to get a better idea of the condition to maybe make you an offer next week, is that something that we'd be able to set up? Sure. Just make sure you're in that ballpark and we're not wasting our time. But of yeah, course. I can get you in. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. Dalton needs, I can, I was going to have Dalton ready in less than a week. That's nothing. As a matter of fact, I got a section eight tenant. I just have been working on these three flats and haven't gotten over there, mm. but, uh, that's a quick fix. And then 74th, you should drive by that since you're right over there. Mm-hmm. Needs a little more work. Needs a little bit more work. Okay. Are, do you know if 74th is yeah. on a lockbox or if there's some sort of access to that? No, no, I don't. No, no. Um, no, you have to call me back. Either John or myself can show it then. I'm not sure he's available today because we got three boat charters trying to get this boat ready so i would say next week is better okay that works out no yeah i know father's day's on sunday as well so i I think i would want to wait till till next week as well um but okay yeah that sounds good now and just just always something that i like to ask would anybody be upset with you if you didn't speak with them first before you know actually accepting an offer on this maybe somebody that you know you value their opinion on price or you know somebody that else somebody else that might have a decision on this hello hey mrs handy let's call it back this is a great deal luckily i got a a lot of the info that I need. What I'm going for right now, the only thing that I wasn't. Hello. Here we go. Hey, Mrs. Handy. I think I. I think my call dropped. I'm sorry. Hey. Yeah. That's okay. I wondered where you were. <laughs> I don't know what happened there. So but, go ahead. What's happening? Yeah. No. I just wanted to see if there was potentially anybody else that you know you you might that might you know get upset with you if you didn't speak with them first before actually making the decision to sell. Like maybe. Some- uh, no. I'm getting all kind of offers in, so uh, I'll give you my email address, just send them to me, and I'll give you a quick reply. <laughs> I got you. I guess I was trying to see if there's potentially any other decision makers that, you know, what you'd want to talk with first before actually, you know, accepting an offer or anything like that. Oh, uh, there might be. There might be. Just send me something, and I can take it from there. Okay, gotcha. 
Okay, yeah, no, typically I always like to, I always like to just have all decision makers there, um, just because it, you know, makes things faster, you know, we don't have to pay, play a bunch of phone right. tags, but, um. Not a problem, yeah. I'm sure I'm faster than you are. <laughs> Um, no, I'm sure I, I'm I'm sort of newer to the game of real estate, so I'm I, I wouldn't doubt that at all. Now, um, my my team and I we are very flexible with our closing timeline. Um, for these two vacant ones, what is your ideal timeline on when you'd actually like to you know close on the property and collect that check? Yeah, we can close in a week or two. Okay. Perfect. And uh, awesome. Yeah, so I'm going to just kind of take like the next 20 to 30 minutes to talk with some partners um, that I, I'd like to buy these properties with. Um, and then I can give you a call back maybe sometime next week, set up those times to maybe view the property, and we can kind of take it from there. Sounds great. Awesome. Thank, Look forward to it. thank you so much, Mrs. Handy. I hope you have a okay. great weekend. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Fuck I was yeah. Ripping today. Ripping. Fire. Absolutely. Like, Actual great deals. So I, I love his energy there at the end. You know, him and his team, they're super pumped up. For cold calling, uh, I believe that all happened on one day because it repeatedly talked about Father's Day being that weekend. Um, yeah, really good results. I will say on that last call, uh, felt like the seller, he kind of lost the seller there a little bit at the end. Not saying it's going to cost her the deal, but with the whole like decision maker, she's like, yeah, I'll be faster than you. Send me what you got. The other thing is, is the conversation on that one shifted from them talking about walking the property to now just email something over to me. Um, I, I, I didn't like how that one ended. Um, I didn't like that question. I don't ever really like that question about decision makers. Um, because quite frankly, you know, you can find that out with just pushing forward with the close, right? Hey, I'm willing to make you an offer right now. You said two hundred thousand dollars. I'll give you two hundred thousand dollars on both of them. Um, and so instead of asking if there's a decision maker, you're gonna find out when you made that offer right there if there's another decision maker. Um, so looking at the the full scope of these three cold calls. 22 years old in the Chicago market. Here's my feedback. Very smooth, very confident on the phones. Uh, love his energy. Uh, love his ability at times to ask really great questions. On the bad side, I think he is using a process that I wish he would move away from. I think if, if we made some, some tweaks to his process, um, he would be so much more efficient on the phone and across the board inside of probably his whole wholesale operation. Uh, it, it feels very much like we're always doing uh, multiple conversations. We're never closing on the first call, no matter how motivated they are, no matter how great the price is. I mean, he even said it. These are great deals. Why are we adding an opportunity for you to miss out on them? Why are we getting off the phone? Why aren't we trying to close these? Uh, don't love the whole talk to my partners thing. Never a big fan of that. Uh, even if you do have someone to talk to, I just don't like losing uh, that stature in the call, uh, that, that place of authority and being the decision maker like he presented himself throughout the call. Like own it. Um, and then the last thing on that last call, when she said, I'm faster than you. I I really didn't like his response there. I think it caught him off guard. Um, I, it was almost like the seller was telling him, like, if you're if you're the real deal, why aren't we doing this now? Because um, if you're just going to email me over an offer right now, why can't you just verbally just make the offer? Um, I'm assuming that her husband was the other decision maker because she had brought up her husband. Uh, need to be the one to show the property um, and he wasn't available that day so when he repeatedly kept asking about that pretty sure it was just like yeah my husband right here is the other decision maker um, and and then when he said his response to that was is I'm newer in the industry I'm always I'm always down for being raw and real and honest and transparent uh, but you don't have to just throw it out there you already got a younger voice 
Um, if she sees you in person, she's going to see how young you are. Just don't, don't throw yourself under the bus and say, hey, I'm newer in this industry because to someone like this who then says, I'm getting a lot of offers. I'm getting a lot of calls. I've got a Section 8 tenant. I've got this going on. I'm working on these three flats. i got 12 properties. And the other question I'd have for Cameron is, she said she has 12 properties she wanted to sell. Why do you only want to take two vacant ones? Tenant-occupied properties are great to wholesale. I would have rather have seen him go to the direction of, send me over the information on all 12 of these properties, and let's see if we can put together a deal on all 12. And then if, if it doesn't work out and you only want the two vacant ones because those are the right price ones, then you can make that decision. But he essentially wrote off 10 properties unnecessarily just because he didn't even get the information. Um, overall, Cameron, I really like you, bro. Uh, I, I, I really like you. I like your style. I think you're going to be highly successful in this industry. Um, I'd love to work with you, man. Uh, I'd, I'd love to, to be able to tweak that process a little bit, at least have you and your team try it out and see if you get some better results. Because I feel like right now, uh, whoever's process it is that you're working, I don't believe it's your own. I believe it's someone else's that they that you either paid for education or something like that. Um, just I can almost promise you they don't get near the results that we get not only here at Titanium Investments, but also just people inside of Titanium University. A few small tweaks, man. I bet you we can see those results go through the roof. Um, is Cameron a closer? I can't tell you that because I didn't see him close anything. I will say he's a hell of a cold caller right there. He's very smooth on the phones. And for being 22 years old, I've got some 22-year-olds that work for me. My average age of people that work inside of Titanium University is 22 years old. Um, or at Titanium Investments, I'm sorry, is 22 years old, and uh, he he doing a great job. Uh, I I feel like uh, my boys could probably close a little bit better than him, just because they actually go for the close. I never actually saw Cameron go for the close, so that. But again, I think that's just part of the process. I bet you if we saw if I could find a video of him actually doing the uh, close then there would be really good results there because he is smooth and confident and sounds good on the phone. Great job, Cameron. Love to connect with you in the future. If you see this video, if anybody sends it to you, let me know what you think in the comments. What did you think about Cameron? Leave a comment. Make sure you give him a like on this video. We'll see you next week on The King Closer Reacts.